This is part 26 of the Stuart Major Beam Rebuild, and it's all about the reassembly of the piston and the valve gear, starting with the piston. As you can see, this piston has two cast iron piston rings. So the first thing to do is to lubricate the cast iron piston rings before putting them in the cylinder. And it's also very important to make sure that the cast iron piston rings have the gaps at opposite sides to each other, not both down the same side. You will notice if you look at this cylinder, there is a strange sort of a recess at the top. And if you look closely, you'll see that in this recess, that is the area where the steam port enters the cylinder. This is not really the norm. I haven't seen this much before. Normally the cylinder bore is totally parallel all the way up and the steam port just enters at one side of it. But because this cylinder has a machined recess, this makes it slightly more difficult to make the piston rings fit in the bore. If the cylinder was parallel all the way, it would be very simple. All I would have to do is just hold the piston rings tight against the piston and slide the whole thing into the cylinder. Yes, I know I could go out and buy a piston ring compressor. That would make life very, very easy. But I sometimes like to do things the hard way. Luckily, I've always had a very delicate touch with things. I should have been a gynaecologist, really. I may have mentioned before that at one time in my youth, I wanted to be a surgeon, just so I could cut people up while they were asleep. But instead, I became a musician, and now I do this as well. What you need to do this job is a little bit of feel. From a very early age, I've always been able to open combination locks without knowing the combination. This is because you just have to feel your way in with the combination tumblers. And I use exactly the same principle to fit this piston with its cast iron piston rings into this oddly shaped cylinder. And the first thing I need is my bluntest knife in the world that spends most of its life kicking around on the bench. And it's the one I used in the last episode to cut a piece of gasket material. An essential part of doing this job is having the facility to rock the piston back and forth, as well as remembering where the gaps are. So what you need to do is start with the piece of the piston ring that is opposite the gap. By using the knife to press this piston ring against the piston, if you slightly rock over the piston itself with the piston rod, you can trap this piece of piston ring between the piston and the wall of the cylinder, or the start of the wall of the cylinder. So this will hold the piston ring in one place. Then all you have to do is just run round the edge with the knife, first round to the gap at one side, then round to the gap at the other side, and as if by magic, the piston will slide into the cylinder. You do of course have to repeat this for the second ring, and remember that the gap is at the other side. And it is slightly more difficult because you can't tilt the piston quite as much as you could when the piston was nearly all the way out of the cylinder. Some of you out there might find this really difficult and others will find it easy. If you have real problems with it, I suggest you get some black candles and a suitable animal to sacrifice. Because sometimes it appears that witchcraft could be the only way to do this. So the options are up to you. You can either do it the hard way like I did, or you can buy a piston ring compressor, or you can do it the really hard way, which would be to make a sleeve that fits inside the cylinder to convert it to a parallel bore, and then just slide the piston in and remove the sleeve. Here you see me tightening the cylinder bolts, nice and evenly, not over tightening them, and it's now time to fit the valve gear. And the first thing to do is to figure out which way around it fits. There's not really a lot I can say about this, just watch the video, you'll see what I'm doing. If you look around the base of the cylinder, you will see that it's now bolted to the bed plate using the original bolts. Very important though when you're doing this, hold the bolt at the top on the painted area with a spanner so it cannot move and tighten the nuts underneath. If you do it the other way around and rotate the main bolts, you will damage the paintwork. That's it for part 26, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.